Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 467, written by Esbit11. Secrets of my dad, Master Illusionist. So this happened a couple days ago. I was sitting in the kitchen, quietly drawing, when I heard the door in the garage open and close. I got up to see if my dad had gotten home, but when I checked, the door was still locked and showed no sign of ever being moved. I was of course confused at this, but I chalked it up to the fact that I was alone in a quiet house, so I'm bound to hear something sometimes. A few minutes later, however, I see my dad walk down the hallway. I got up to tell him he scared me with the whole locking the door back thing, and he wasn't in the hall anymore. Again, figuring he had just walked fast to the bathroom, I sat down to continue my drawing. Then, a little bit later, I hear him calling my name from the bathroom. As I got up to see what he wanted, the front door opened and my dad stepped through. When I told him what I saw and heard, we went back to the bathroom only to see that it was empty and again showed no sign of usage. Dad said this has happened to him before on multiple occasions throughout his years. This is the first time for me. Anyone had this happen to you, or is it just my dad and me? Case file number 468, written by Anonymous. Secrets of Houdini, the dog. This just happened 10 minutes ago. I first want to say this happened one other time about two months ago, and it left me in disbelief, and I kept trying to reason it, and eventually came to the conclusion that I must not have been paying attention and let my dog in. But this happened now 100%, I'm sure of it. I've been up for a bit, having coffee and doing my morning routine. I've been up for over an hour or so, I'm not groggy or tired. Two of my dogs come out to the living room and go to the door to be let outside for a pee. I let them out and go onto my deck and close the door behind me. One dog stays on the deck besides me and I watch my other dog go around the corner. He was gone for a few minutes, figured he was doing his business so I just waited. After like 5 minutes I called him and nothing happened. Call him a couple more times, still nothing. I go and look around the corner and he's not there, so I go look at the other side of the house, not there either. First thought was no freaking way, not again, because I had my eye on him the whole time until he went around the corner and I was waiting for him. So I'm thinking, what? No way he's inside. I sat there for a couple seconds trying to think about it and let it sink in, because I 100% believe in this and I've had weird things happen, but this is the first time I can say without any doubt this was real if he was inside. I open the door and he is inside, laying on his bed. How did that just happen? I am a sane person with no mental problems and can without a doubt say that this just happened. This is the second time something like this has happened in the last couple of months and now I think it's the first time it actually did happen and wasn't my mind playing tricks on me. My front yard is fully fenced which also wraps around the two sides of the house. There is only one door in and out. My mind is blown. Have a good day, everyone. Case Notes, file number 468. You know how in video games, one trick to reduce load on memory and processing power is that out of view elements and events are not actually happening, they de-render themselves. I wonder if this happens for the universe too. Your dog turned the corner, no other conscious entities were around and so your dog could phase through the house and plop back inside. If this does happen, it's clear it isn't always the case. Also clear that the ground itself stays material, since otherwise your pup would have plummeted towards the core. Not an experience I'd wish for him. Bonus file, written by XX Glossy. Secrets of Nature's Frankenstein Monsters. My sister and I were reminiscing on our favorite childhood memories when I decided to tell her about the creatures I used to think I saw behind our old house. She told me she saw the exact same things. Both of our stories lined up so perfectly that it actually freaked us out and we had to stop talking about it. Several years ago, we were in northwestern Oregon. We've since moved states. We lived in St. Helens in a house with a huge wooded area behind it. We always played and explored back there. When I was back there, sometimes I would see movement in the corner of my vision. Whenever I would look over to see what it was, I would see one of these things. I never really saw them at the same time. The first one was tall, dark, and super lanky. 
It walked on all fours and just looked sickly. When I turned to look at it, it would freeze in place, then just bolt further into the forest. It looked leathery, with only a little bit of hair on its legs and neck. It always looked like it had big ears or anthers, but I could never tell for sure. I never saw its face. When it stood still, it had a solid shape. Whenever it bolted, it was like it lost its shape and the edges of it were constantly shifting. The second one scared me more. It had the same lanky legs and walked on all fours, but the body was disproportionately larger than the legs. It also looked like it had more hair than the other one. I would always see it just before or after the first one I described. It also had the same weird ears or antlers, but it was always standing somewhere dark, unlike the first one, which always seemed to not mind light as long as there were lots of trees. I never saw it move. It would just stand there when I saw it and disappear when I blinked or looked away. I also saw this one's face, and it had these huge milky white eyes with no pupils. Sometimes I would catch it watching me from behind or between the trees. They both were about the size of a large horse or something. We could also hear branches snap whenever the smaller one bolted. The first few times I saw them, I was scared, crapless. Before I saw the first one, I'd always just felt a little anxious and like I was being watched. Before I saw the second one, I'd felt the same way, but would also get a strong sense of dread to go along with it. After a while, as child me got more accustomed to seeing them, I'd whisper greetings to them. They'd stick around a few seconds longer than usual whenever I did, like they could hear my whispers. Eventually, I felt more comfortable with them being there. I didn't feel the dread or fear after a few years of seeing them. Something told me to not try and get close, but as long as I respected our distance, I almost felt safer knowing they were there. I even saw the large one, because of its eyes, in the forest outside my bedroom window one night when it was raining. I told my sister of all this and she started freaking out, saying she thought they were like weird imaginary friends. If I had to describe something that vaguely resembles them, I'd say like a cross between a deer, a bear, large one, or a sickly wolf, small one, and a man, like a wendigo almost, but not quite the same. They never seemed evil either, they just scared me at first. They might have just been some messed up animals, but that doesn't feel right to me for some reason. Forgot to describe the feet. I never saw them as clearly, but my little sister said they looked like a cross between paws and some really weird hands. They had longish toes that looked like fingers. Also. The little one could usually be first spotted with either one or both of its front legs and arms folded against its chest. It would put them down to walk or run. The larger one never moved like that in front of us. I always had this feeling in my gut that it didn't trust us enough to do so. Between my sister and I, we kind of agreed on the feelings they gave us, though there were some differences. She felt more of a connection to the small one, and I felt more of a connection to the big one. Simple explanation could be that I'm the oldest one and she's the youngest. Not sure what a spiritual explanation would be for that, if there even is one. At first, we were both terrified and would bolt whenever we saw them. I would get the sense of paranoia and later dread. I also felt very protective over the smallest one and respectful of the larger one. It felt like they knew where we were at all times, even if we couldn't see them. As time passed and we grew used to them, the fear and dread went away. It just became awe and silent respect. I also felt safer in the forest, as if we had something watching over us back there. My sister would bring them snacks and leftovers and books, and I built them a lean-to. A homeless dude took that as his home. Police came by to give him a ride to a shelter, and we unfortunately had to take it down. I also remember looking out of my bedroom window on the night while it was raining, same night I mentioned originally. I'd been having nightmares and was listening to the rain. After my eyes adjusted to the dark, I spotted the big one. I almost missed it, but the eye stood out like a sore thumb. It startled me because I wasn't expecting it, but then I felt super calm and was able to fall back asleep. No more nightmares. Again, they might just be a pair of unidentified slash sickly animals, but they still help me feel safe and in awe and wonder as a child. Shout out to those guys for real.